Hey guys, in today's episode of How to Wire It, I'm going to show you guys how to wire up a DC motor for bi-directional control. Now, in a previous video, I've shown you how to use a transistor to control a DC motor in just one direction. You could change the speed of it, but you, was, you were only able to control it in a single direction. In this video, I want to show you guys how to take a, an H-bridge here. This one happens to be the SN754410 and control a motor in two directions. So for this tutorial, you're going to need three longer jumper wires to wire from the chip to your Arduino, a handful of small jumper wires for power and ground connections. You'll also need a motor and of course you'll need the H driver, the and of course, you'll also need the H-bridge to control everything. So let's now jump into how to wire this up and just get everything wired up and then we'll take a look at the software to make it all run. So I've zoomed in here close on the breadboard so that you can see exactly all the connections that I'm making because this is a bit more of a complex uh, tutorial than some of the other how to wire it videos. So to start off, I want to just wire up the power and ground connections to this chip because there are a lot of them and they're all sort of different from each other. So the first thing that I want to do is wire up the ground connections. So this chip has a total of four ground connections. We have pins four and five and 12 and 13. Now all four of these I don't believe that all four need to be connected to ground, but it's a good safe bet to connect them to ground. And as you can see that if you're driving a large motor off of this, you would also want to attach these pins to a heat sink of some sort, either a physical, a large heat sink, or just large amounts of copper on whatever circuit board that you might be wiring this to. For today's video, you don't need to worry about heat sinking though, because we're only going to be driving this relatively small DC motor. So to start off, I have just a couple of really just tiny little jumper wires, and I'm just going to use these to bridge those two uh, connections, those two ground connections there on either side. All right, so now that we have these little guys in place, let's go ahead and pop in these jumpers that will actually connect those to the ground on our breadboard here. So we got that side connected, and we also now have this far side connected here. So now that we have all the grounds in, let's go and do the power for this. So, if we look at the data sheet here, we can see that we actually have two VCCs. And one of them is for the power on the chip, and the other VCC2 is for the power to the motor. So, let's say, you know, today we're just going to run this motor on 5 volts. But, let's say you had a 12 volt motor or something like that. Well, you connect VCC1 to 5 volts to power the chip, and VCC2 you would connect to your 12 volt power supply. So that's why we have two different power supplies or two different VCCs. Uh, but today we're just going to use both of them will be connected to 5 volts. So VCC1 which is our chip power supply, we'll just connect to 5 volts there. And VCC2, which is on the opposite corner, we will connect to 5 volts as well. So now, hopefully, assuming we've wired everything correctly, we have power wired to this chip. So the next part that we need to tackle is having the Arduino communicate to the chip and control the motor. So for that, we have three little jumper wires. 
and we have three things that we need to control on this chip. So we're going to ignore this side for right now, other than the fact that we connected our VCC and ground. We're going to ignore this side of the chip and it's oriented like this on the board. So ignoring this side, we have this 1A, 1Y, 2Y, 2A, and then 1, 2, EN. So what these pins are, the Ys are your motor connections. So the Ys are where we're going to plug in the power for our motor. The A's are our logic pins for the motor. So these are the pins 1A and 2A are what's going to connect to our Arduino. And then lastly, we have this 1, 2, EN. And this is what effectively equates to our speed pin. This is how we're going to, going to control the speed of the motor. 1A and 2A are basically our direction control. So when 1A is high and 2A is low, the motor will spin one way. And when 1A is low and 2A is high, it will spin the other. So let's get these three wired up and hopefully we should then only have to plug in the motor and go take a look at the code. So my enable pin, I'm going to make be this white wire here and it's on this far corner and I'm going to attach it to my Arduino's pin 10. The orange wire, I'm going to plug in right next to that white wire and plug it into my Arduino's pin 9. And then all the way on the other side, right next to v the motor VCC, I'm going to plug in this blue wire and plug it into pin 8 on my Arduino. So now we're using pins 8, 9, and 10 on the Arduino. We have both our directional control pins connected to the chip, as well as the enable pin, which effectively translates to our speed. The last thing that we need to do is attach the motor. And like I said, the Y pins, 1Y and 2Y, are what we are going to connect to the motor. So those are right next to our grounds. So I'm just going to take this and plug in the ground wire there to not to the ground of the board, but to the one Y pin and the two Y pin. I'm going to connect to my motors positive. So now we have everything here wired up that we should need in order to get this running. So now let's go and jump over to the software and see how everything actually works. All right, so here we are with the code for this tutorial. And you can find this code in the link in the description of this video. And up here at the top, we have our three pins that we define. Our speed pin, again, is the EN pin on pin 10. Our forward pin is on pin 9 and our reverse pin is on pin eight, and those connect to the logic pins one and two, those 1A and 2A pins on the uh, driver here. So then I define a couple of uh, variables that are basically, I just kind of tune them into this motor playing around before recording. And I found that the minimum uh, PWM value to really make this motor turn is about 150 and I probably didn't need to define the max but I defined it anyway as 255. It's the limit of the PWM uh, value anyway. I figured I'd just put it in there for clarity's sake. So then in setup we def we set our three pins all as outputs and before I get to loop I just want to explain a couple of these functions that I made down here at the bottom. These just make it a little bit more clear what we're trying to do. So motor forward sets our forward and reverse pins so that the motor will spin one way. And motor rev, REV, sets those pins the opposite so that it will now spin in reverse. So when the logic pin 
Well, basically, to switch directions, you invert the values of those logic pins. So if 1A is high and, the, and 2A is low, if you flip those so that 1A is low and 2A is high, it will then switch the direction that the motor will spin in. Then I have this motor stop and motor set speed. So motor stop is pretty self-explanatory. It tells them it basically turns off the motor. It disables the motor. Motor set speed uh, allows us to give a speed that we want the motor to turn at, a PWM value, and it just analog writes that out to the speed pin. Yeah, these are mostly just one-liner functions, but it does make it a little bit more clear what the intention is. So coming back to loop, means the first line I say motor forward, and that just sets those logic pins so that the motor will spin in whatever the forward direction is. And then I have two for loops, and these for loops, this is basically the exact same as if you go to examples under analog and you go to fading, it is basically the exact same as that, these two for loops. We set I, instead of setting it to zero, like we do in fading, we set it to this motor minimum speed. So we're gonna start our motor at its minimum speed, and we're gonna run this for loop as long as, it's, as long as I is less than the maximum speed, and each time we're gonna increment I by one. Inside the for loop, we just set the speed to be equal to I and wait for 10 milliseconds. And we continue doing this all the way until we get to the maximum speed, at which point we exit this for loop and enter this one. And this one just starts I at its maximum speed and runs as long as we're more than our minimum speed, each time decrementing I by one. And it's the exact same thing inside. We set the sp motor speed to I and we wait for 10 milliseconds. So this here is basically just copy and pasted right down here, except this first line here of motor forward, we then set it to motor reverse. And we do the same thing, we ramp up and back down. So what this program should do, assuming everything is wired correctly, is start the motor in one direction, ramp it all the way up to its maximum speed, and then back down, set the motor to reverse its direction, and then ramp it back up and back down. So this will up, in one direction and down and then back up in the opposite direction and back down. So now that we've seen the code, let's plug it in and see how it all works. So you can see it might be a little bit hard to tell that the motor is changing directions, but it is. It's switching back and forth each time ramping up and down in that direction. So this is the pretty basic way to wire up one of these, but it's really effective unless you have bi-directional motor control. Now, if you wanted to set up another motor, it's basically the same thing. You have, again, three pins. You have a 4A and 3A, and then you also have 3, 4 enable. And those just wire up to three other pins on here. And then you have your 4A and 4Y, which are just mirrored of the motor connections here, and that connects to your motor. So it's pretty simple if you want to set up another motor running off of this. It's not too hard. And yeah, that's how you get a basic H-Bridge driver running. So that's all for today. If you like this video, Definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like it. And I'll see you guys later.